Hi, I'm Todd Houlihan. Welcome to the eighth in our video series on best practice use of portable XRF for geochem applications. I'm joined by Alex Thurston today, our Applications Engineering Manager. How are you doing, Alex? Doing well, Todd. Thanks. Okay, this video is all about quality assurance, quality control, QAQC. Our customers are starting to generate their own chemistry on their samples, so they need to take responsibility for the integrity of that data. Right, and those users that frequently send samples to the lab are likely to have already a, an established QAQC procedure. Uh, so some of the aspects of this video may not be entirely new to them. However, I do think that they will pick up on some unique aspects of handheld XRF. My um, customers always ask, what QAQC should they do? So I always reply to them, well, why don't you replicate what you're doing for the lab? That way they create uniformity, they can standardize their protocols, and on a basic level, it's just easier for them to remember. Right, I think it boils down to essentially three aspects. That would be contamination, accuracy, and repeatability. Okay, the XRF contamination check. This is where we use a blank sample to test the cleanliness of the front of the analyzer, the window. Uh, it also allows us to check if there's any dust affecting the results. We supply a silicon dioxide fused quartz disc with every analyzer, and when measuring that, we should only measure silicon. Right, and the user should insert this blank at regular intervals uh, during their batch testing. Right. So the next thing to do is to check the accuracy of the analyzer. So the customer could use all sorts of samples to do this, either some matrix match certified reference materials, some samples from their project that have been assayed by the lab, or the NIST sample that we supply with every geochem unit. Right, and a good rule of thumb for the frequency of this type testing would be about every one in 20 tests. Uh, ideally, the accuracy uh, level is up to the user, uh, but it should be ultimately fit for their purpose. Right, and that accuracy is going to be determined by a whole series of things that we've discussed in this series, sample prep, test times, calibration, the sample containers that we use. So the user should send off a percentage of the samples that they're testing with the Vanta to a lab to confirm the analysis of the instrument. And what that helps them do is build up a library of samples that they can ensure the accuracy of the Vanta to their needs uh, is confirmed with the, the known good lab analysis. Right. My experience is they send off a lot of samples right at the beginning of a project, but once they build up confidence in their method, their workflows, get some data back from the lab that confirms the accuracy, they then drop the amount of samples that they send to the lab over the duration of a project. So Todd, could you speak to how we would check the XRF precision? Sure. Checking the XRF precision is all about testing the stability of the analyzer. It's a good way to check repeatability. So multiple measurements on the same sample and looking at the variability of the data. Um, it's more important than accuracy most of the time because we can use samples of known concentrations and adjust the instrument's factory calibration to get the results that we need. Right, and the precision of these results are critical to the reliability of that data. And that's something that we've worked on here in the factory uh, in order to achieve that precision is by improving the hardware of the instrument as well as through a number of signal processing uh, improvements that we call axon technology. Right, and I've really seen that bear out when I do my relative standard deviation checks by precision measurements where we do a minimum of seven readings on the same sample and calculating the RSDs, we can really see that RSD really low. Right, and the stability of the instrument is where the Vanta really shines. Um, from working from weeks to months in harsh conditions, uh, high sample throughputs, and in hot temperatures, uh, you can see on screen here that the stability of the Vanta is maintained through temperature cycling. And uh, customers can check this precision really easily of the stability of their analyzer over time by just going back and monitoring those XRF accuracy checks that we talked about earlier. If they look at that data over a long period of time, it'll help them identify if there's anything out of spec. And the, the example we can see on the screen here was perfect because we can see that the anomaly is an anomaly identified associated with the instrument being out of spec after a certain period of time, and they're allowed, it allowed them to go back and check that. 
I also like to do a lot of repeatability measurements of the same sample under different sample preparation regimes to help me optimise what sample prep is going to be best to achieve a customer's data quality objectives. I also like to do repeat measurements to define instrument error from sample error. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, by taking multiple measurements of a sample but in different locations of that sample, we get a better feeling for the heterogeneity of the sample and how much that is affecting the results. If we test that same sample but leaving the analyzer in the same location, then we define instrument error. And by comparing those two, allows us to optimize the sample prep that is going to work best to achieve certain data quality objectives. That's helpful. Uh, and users can always contact us for more information on that subject, right? For sure, yes. So let's summarize. QAQC, we need to... Test blanks. Test some samples of known concentrations. Send those samples to the lab. And do some repeatability measurements. Duplicates, calculate some RSDs. And for frequency, a good rule of thumb is 1 in 20, or we can just repeat what we do for our laboratory procedure. Brilliant. Thanks, Alex. Happy to help, Todd. Next time, we'll be covering some tips on implementing your portable XRF program, things we haven't covered in the previous episodes. So see you next time.